Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to keep the message brief tonight, but wanted to share with some, uh, something with you that I think would be helpful to you in your everyday walk and in your everyday life. It's something that we all have to deal with, and it's the emotion called anger. Now, I'm sure uh, nobody came in here angry and upset tonight over anything, right? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're lying. No, you just don't, you don't have to do that. I know I'm a little bit upset. It was about 2.30, and I go out to my parking garage here downtown to start my car, and I don't get a start. It's dead. The battery's dead in my 2014 Toyota Prius. Man, was I hacked off. I couldn't get to work, and so had to find another way to get to church tonight. But it's uh, little things like that that can kind of get to you, right? You know, when things don't go according to plan, or somebody says something to you that you don't like, or uh, something at work happens that's not very pleasant, or a friend starts to get on your nerves and drive you nuts. Maybe that's even your spouse, perhaps, or somebody in your family. Stop looking at each other's spouses, okay? We get upset about all kinds of things, don't we? I mean, things just seem to get to us, and with all the craziness going on in our society, in our world, in our culture, man, people are just going off on each other, it seems like. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about anger. I mean, Job was angry and upset. He had everything taken away from him. The guy was loaded. He was wealthy. He was rich. He had it all. And then Satan comes cruising along one day and decides to have a little dialogue and conversation with God and says, you know, I bet if I roughed him up a little bit, but if I gave him a hard time, he might just disown you. And the Lord said, you can do whatever you like to him. Just don't take his life. And then Job laments for about the first 37 chapters of the book. I mean, there's 42 chapters in the book of Job. And, and then finally, it's God's turn to talk, and we heard the Old Testament reading for, this, for today, the 38th chapter, right, where God kind of puts Job in his place and says, you didn't make everything, you didn't create everything, I don't under, expect you to understand everything that's going on, but I'm the one who lives, who reigns, and who rules. God even got upset as well. In fact, it says in uh, the book of Exodus, I believe it's chapter 32, the Israelites, can you believe this? They weren't obeying God and doing what God wanted them to do. So God got a little bit upset with them. And he says in chapter 32, verse 9, this is the whole golden calf incident. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. The anger of the Lord appears all over the scriptures. I mean, even Jesus got upset too with the merchants, you know, and and he turned over the tables and he had a few words for the the Jewish Sadducees and Pharisees at that time when he called them whitewashed walls or tombstones. He had a few choice words for them too. But God's anger, you see, is righteous anger. It's an anger that doesn't sin. Whereas, because of our sin nature, most of the anger that we have, a lot of theologians would say, is not very justifiable. But I want to take the word anger and turn it into an acronym tonight. So if you get a pen or a pencil handy, you want to take notes, because I know you're going to figure the sermon, because most people only remember 10% or less of any message or lecture or presentation given to them. But these are kind of interesting, and you might want to chew on them throughout the week, especially if you find yourself getting angry. The word A in anger is acknowledge. When you're upset, stop being in denial. If you're angry, then say, you know, I'm angry, I'm upset. You've heard the saying, denial is not a river in Egypt, right? Okay, you know, God's reported as angry several hundred times in the Old Testament. The wisdom litter, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, you know, it says that anger, anger can, be, can be dangerous and have consequences. So there's no sin in getting angry or upset. It's a God-given emotion. Um, it says, you know, in your anger, the book of Ephesians says, do not sin. And that's where some people get it wrong because they cross the line uh, into sin when they're upset. So 
Just say, Lord, I'm angry. And then say what you're angry at. And that's what the N is in the word anger. Name it. So you have acknowledge it, A, and then you name it. Put a name into it. Maybe it's an individual. Maybe it's a group. Maybe it's an organization. Maybe it's a church. Maybe it's a pastor. Hope not. Or somebody at work or a friend down the street or somebody in your family, or maybe it's an in-law, uh, ask yourself the question, what am I angry about? Why am I so upset? The elder brother of the prodigal son was angry about the feast you know, for his younger brother who had been partying it up and spent all of dad's inheritance and was, was coming home and dad kills a fatted calf and decides to put on a party and the older brother isn't very happy about it. Jonah, remember him in the Old Testament? What did he get upset about? Yeah, Jonah preaches the word of God to, to the Gentile residents of Nineveh, Gentiles, and God saves them from, from death, from the consequences of their behavior. And Jonah's not happy about it. He doesn't want God being loving and compassionate and merciful. So, Jonah's angry to the point of wanting his life taken away. So nine times out of ten, anger is a result of, are you ready, three things. Hurt, frustration, and almost always the root cause of anger is fear. So ask yourself, am I hurt about something? Um, what am I frustrated over? Or why am I frustrated with this person? And then maybe ask yourself the question, what am I afraid of? What am I fearful of? Um, or what, what failure could be out there if I attempt to do something? So when you deal with those emotions and you begin dealing with the root of your anger, so put a name to it. Here's the letter G. Are you ready? Ready for the letter G? Give it to God. How about this? Pray instead of pout. I don't know about you, but I'm a pretty good powder. I can do that really well. Just go and pout and have a little pity party. Woe is me. Blame other people. I'm really good at that. Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, I mentioned earlier, in your anger, don't sin. Uh, don't give the devil a foothold, it goes on to say in that same chapter, Ephesians chapter 4. Um, maybe you've heard uh, the expression, um, you know, for, uh, Anger is, is or forgiveness is the is the unforgiveness is the poison we drink, thinking that it's going to kill somebody else. When really, what it really does is it kills us. So, give it to God. Your anger. Here's E. Express it in healthy ways. It's okay to vent. We all need to vent sometimes, right? I know I need to vent on occasion too. Proverbs twenty nine verse eleven. If you're looking for a scripture verse, says a fool gives full vent to his anger. And we've all gone off, and we've done that before, haven't we? We've all gone off on people, on situations, on things, on groups. We've, we've lost control of the situation. There's definitely, definitely different langu uh, levels of anger. You, you, know, you've get, you can have rage. You can have mild anger, out-of-control anger. Some anger really escalates, and then you see a lot of violence taking place in homes and between people and, and even... We see it today in society as well. Express it in healthy ways, not explosive. Focus on the hurt, the frustration, and the fear. Relax and try to keep the anxiety as low as possible. Um, Anger is uh, an energy, and it can be used for good, or it can be used for bad or destruction. You can blow people out of the water, or you can be careful, but still get your message across. R is... Remove it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 says, get rid of anger. And the way that you do that is, is by pulling up the anger weed. It could be a grudge. It could be bitterness. It could be resentfulness. Uh, it could be unforgiveness. But the way to deal with removing it is by asking God to take it away and then granting forgiveness to to the person or thing that you're angry over. Because without forgiveness, uh, 
we'll just replay or we'll meditate on the same event over and over again. And that whole psychological state of anger just keeps coming back. You almost have to re-up and say, I've decided to forgive that person. I've decided to forgive that group. And I'm not going to get angry about it again. Sometimes we have to do that with ourselves. Psalm 103 verse 8 says that God is slow to anger and abounding in love and compassion. So the tools that we need to be abounding in love and compassion and slow to anger are the tools that God gives us, his word and sacraments. We realize that he has every right to be angry, in fact, wrathful over us because of our sin, yet he shows love and compassion instead. James 1.19 gives us some really good advice, and I'm just about done. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. That's one quick and two slows. Okay, Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Thank goodness that God took out the full vent of his anger and his wrath on Jesus so that you and I don't have to experience that at all. It all went on Jesus Christ. He was our substitute. He took our place. God damned him on the cross. If you want to take those words literally, that's exactly what happened so that you and I wouldn't have to suffer that damnation. So you and I wouldn't have to be suffocated with the wrath of of God, that which we rightly deserve. Our sins have been forgiven because Jesus took God's wrath. We call that word propitiation. He appeased the wrath of God so that we wouldn't have to experience that for all eternity. That's the good news. That's the hope that we live in. That's the joy that we live in. And that's the word that we want to tell others about. So remember, when it comes to your anger, A, acknowledge it, N, name it, G, give it to God, E, express it in healthy ways, R, Remove it. And remember that God's anger has been removed from you and from me because Jesus took it all on for us. His love to you now and forever. Amen.